Mark Gilman, along with Western Oregon Wolves head coach Arn Ferguson. Coach, uh, make it now six wins in a row. Uh, wasn't easy, especially early as Mother Nature got into the act, but uh, uh, after a uh, kind of a uh, sloppy first half, uh, the Wolves pull away and defeat South Dakota School of Mines uh, uh, last weekend. But uh, you were playing a good team, there's no doubt about that. Yeah, South Dakota does a lot of really good things. They run a flex and really try to get after it. You and then with the weather, it's hard to, to, to do certain things. Um, so it was nice to see the, the wind and the rain actually stop the second half. And our offense and, and defense really, I thought, became better uh, on execution. And also um, give South Dakota O-line especially a lot of credit. They did a nice job of, of vertical runs inside. Um, and then uh, our D-line adjusted. Um, and I thought our backers adjusted. And then uh, uh, our offense really controlled the football more, for the most part in the second half. And then turnovers were a key part of things. Mm-hmm. And also uh, our defense with um, stops inside the red zone. Yeah. It, all those things to address. The first half was very sloppy, but uh, the Wolves didn't turn it over during that slot fest. Well, South Dakota School of Mines had, had some uh, struggles in that department. Yeah, anytime you win the turnover battle, and you know, our offense have done a nice job of controlling the football, and that's the main thing, um, especially a good team like South Dakota. They've been averaging 34, 35 points a game, and to really, other than the very end, hold them to, to one touchdown um, speaks volume of our seniors on defense and then also the, the, the adjustments that we asked them to make to, to make those adjustments. George Schwartzlender, the uh, defensive player of the week, and uh, you know I, I I kiddingly call him the bruiser from Burns, but he's been very physical and part of a, a very good front line that has just been maturing every week. Yeah, George um, adds some extra intensity. Um, obviously, size. I mean, he's I think three twenty. Um, a very good college wrestler in his own right, also. Um, and also a dominant high school wrestler from Burns, that he has that toughness that you need in a cold, sloppy, dig your cleats in and, mm-hmm. and, and be physical. And, and George made a lot of plays, crucial plays, against a real good offensive line in South Dakota. And the offense uh, continued to show some diversity out there. Ball thrown uh, well when needed and uh, good running attack. And Malik had that, that big run uh, somewhat late in the game that uh, really helped to kind of, uh, uh, it was a straw that broke the camel's back there to yeah. set up a, a big score. Yeah, before that, I mean, Paul and, and Philip yes. scoring touchdowns is, is vital yes. in a uh, weather that, that uh, every possession is crucial. And then Malik um, later uh, establishing a really good, I think a 74, 76 yard run um, on some really nice cuts um, on the grass. So that's nice to see him continuing to have that, you know, as uh, Joe Harris has continued to do really good things also. Mm-hmm. The, yes. So that one two combination is really nice to see. And uh, that that sets you up now for the final game of the season. Yeah. We didn't mention it last week, but uh, Western Oregon still number ten in the region and uh, still still a shot to to make the playoffs. And I know the playing uh, Humboldt State, uh, even though it's a, a non counter in the uh, GNAC standings, they have clinched the conference. Still a big ball game. Yeah, and just to clarify that, because we get a lot of questions on right. that, um, we had to move the the game that counted for the GNAC. Um, and Humboldt was willing to do that for us. Um, we knew that that first game being a counter, when you had to switch between Portland State and Humboldt, um, we're very thankful for them to do this, allow us to play a money game, so to speak. But uh, we also knew that it would also put us at a disadvantage come late in the season. But everything's really, um, this game puts everything in perspective. Um, the GNAC, you know, you don't, every game is not a counter just mm-hmm. because of, of it being fair all the way across the board when you don't play everybody. Um, but we're 10th in the region, Humboldt's uh, third in the region. We beat um, Northern Alabama, which is number two in their region. Yes. And obviously this is a huge game that you would think if we we're able to be successful, um, we would argue, it would be hard to argue for us not to move up. And then obviously Humboldt adds the, with their strength of schedule and the amount of games they won, you'd hope that would leap you over where the top seven go um, to the playoffs. And that's always our number one goal. Going into playoffs, GNAC, it's it's nice to win that, but when everybody doesn't really play each other fairly, mm-hmm. so to speak, it, it, early games, late games, those type of things can really change your season. We're looking for 
opportunity to be in the playoffs. And Humboldt's an extremely good team. They're averaging 45 to 50 points a game, jumping on everybody. Their offense is, is flying. Their defense is, is really flying around. So we know we have a, a great opponent. We're just glad it's a, the <laughs> last game of the season, and it, there's a lot at stake. Now, I, I, I know in the first meeting down there, it was uh, the, they got off to a quick start. You guys struggled a bit. Uh, is a quick start going to be a key in your mind? Um, really, the the game will be will be decided with their O and D line yeah. and their O and D line. They have a tremendous running back, tremendous receivers, a really good quarterback that doesn't make mistakes. Um, Phillips come in and, and, and done similar things for us with with a good running game also. Um, so the battle of the possessions, the the field position, and also who's able to run the football. There, I mean, Garner's a phenomenal guy that's running. Um, yeah with numbers that really we haven't seen in this league. And you're talking about Rawls, we're talking about Watson. Now we're yes. talking about Garner come in, who's pretty much blown everybody out of the water. <laughs> um, but that's credit is really to the O-line. And also he's an extremely good runner that has a bright future also. Now, uh, with, with this ball game on the verge, you, you've still there. I, I can feel a sense of pride in this in in, in the team, in the coaching staff, uh, on what these guys have accomplished. With a game to go, you want to continue that. But uh, this team has accomplished a lot when you consider uh, a lot of the underclassmen you've uh, pushed into service during the course of this year. Yeah, we have a good balance of of it's obviously senior day. Um, we have some seniors that uh, are doing well in school that yeah. chose to also take this as their last opportunity to play, which is really nice to see with their academics. But uh, it's also a combination of young players their first time really playing. So that's a really a good mix for your program. That's that's really why we're continuing to get better. Um, we feel like every game, um, the second half of the season, we've gotten better. Um, some of it's been off the road a little bit, some a little bit of home. But really the, the, the amount of play that they've had in critical downs, um, both offense and defense, is really what's uh, allowed us to push through some very tight ball games. Um, so we're excited to see that. And all year we want to be able to have that last game being meaningful. And there, there's honestly not a more meaningful game than this game than the, the, that we've played since I've been a head coach. I have to tell you, that's a good uh, note to end on, Coach Aaron Ferguson. I, I, you know, for one last time, thank you for your time and uh, uh, best wishes with this ball game. Well, Mark, you do a great job. Appreciate it.